Igbo presidency is like the second Niger bridge. It will never be completed. Or uh, maybe like uh, Ogoni clean up. They flag it off the first time, second time, third time. Instead, they will go there to destroy people's houses. How about the 30,000 minimum wage? These are promises made. Or the, it is, we will return you back to 86 Naira per liter. Petrol pump price. What happened? None of these things will ever, ever happen. What presents a dream? Is what you tell a woman around uh, 8, 9, 30 in the evening. By 5, you, you change. 5, 6 in the morning, you start saying something completely different. That's how it is. It's to seduce you. So you stop supporting IPOB, you stop supporting Biafra, you start thinking about the contracts you will get when an evil man from your village or from your town is there. Because they know that you will always reason like a very foolish African man or woman, as the case may be. These are free view schemes. Second major bridge. We're going to clean up. Evil presidency. Minimum wage. And we go to expressway. We will do this. We will do that. Um, airport uh, in, um, what's the place? Uh, uh, we said we'll get an airport in, um, in Aguilera. Airport in Lebanon. Uh, with Chinese investors, they will build a new city in Aguilera. Whereas the one in Asaba cannot, uh, 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 Boeing, Boeing 747 cannot land there. The cell is too small. There's no drainage. Everything is not working. The well, is not working. But they plan to. If you, have you forgotten that Stella Dua promised us that she will build, um, what's it called, an aircraft um, maintenance hangar somewhere in Obar? And I asked her, Without an airport, so that it doesn't mean when the aircraft lands in Assa, but then we go and tell you to push it to across the river to come and uh, so you can service it in Obar. These are useless schemes. This is something that's saying that um, uh, the youths of today are the leaders of tomorrow. You know, it will never happen. Nothing is you. These are inconsequential schemes, trivial, cooked up and designed. To keep you gullible people in the zoo engaged and busy with your self delusions. You're just insane. Mm, insane. They're saying all these things so that when Tinubu comes, Tinubu will say, Who has made the biggest noise in Igbo land? Uh, they will find them, they will give them uh, uh, maybe 200,000 naira. And you will hear from them again. They are, they are no longer articulating. It's now about um, Igbo presidents. They have no honor, no dignity. No honor and no dignity. The one they went for before has failed. Completely and, and, and totally. See how foolish they are? You don't have the 14 and Igbo, uh, they allow you to bring your so-called Igbo president. After two years, they will, they, will, they, will, they will take permission from Britain and do a coup. Is the man in, in Egypt not, not a former military man? Is the man now leaving Egypt not a former military man? You claim you are an evil man, you are an evil. they will kill you and they will kill your family and the military will take over. Britain will say, go ahead, we'll support you. What would you do? You can make it. You say, rest in peace and uh, we leave it for God. People, you cannot reason beyond your nose. Because of the two by two, you, you, you have in Lagos or in Abuja. That's all. You want to not build the future of an entire nation. What are we doing? Those championing this nonsense about one, one zoo, one Nigeria Igbo presidency garbage, and saying it is the turn of the Southeast, have cleverly forgotten, as they usually do, that not long ago, our own brother, good luck, Ebel Azikiwe, that's his name, Ebel Azikiwe Jonathan, he was a Biafran, or he's, I'm, I'm sure he's still a Biafran. He was the president of the, this Lugardian contraption called Nigeria. Can anybody tell me one visible landmark or free, one, achi one notable achievement attributable to good luck, Jonathan, whilst he was in office? 
Would he succeed in alleviating the economic, social, or political plight of our people? Very vividly saying, for the benefit of argument of, of Niger Delta, are they still not begging for amnesty 60,000 Naira every month? Are they still not begging to be pipeline security guards? He was there for six years. And then what happened? Even people like the Duke that, 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 you know, did something in Cross River. Where is, where is that achievement today? All gone to waste. People don't reason in that zone. They never ever reason. Always looking for the most expedient way out of every mess that they find themselves in. I like good luck, Jonathan. I even like the wife more, patience, because um, she's very vocal and a very um, um, strong spirited woman. Can anybody point to one achievement of Jonathan in office? He was their turn. So they say, he's a Biafran. What was his achievement? Ordinary Enugu Igwacha, which he awarded, was not through the aid the money. Under Jonathan, Second Niger Bridge was not built, and you expect a flanny man to build it for you. Unbelievable. Nothing happened. Niger Bridge was not built under Jonathan. Enugu Igwacha Expressway was not built. No new industries, no decent public housing, not even common water, drinking water, to pipe it to people's homes. Uh, uh, impossible for them to do. I, I grade Jonathan's presidency as a total failure, the same way that I rate Dr. Azikiwe's presidency was a failure, the same way that I rate uh, Aguirre's presidency or or head of stateship as a complete and utter disaster for our people. The same way that I read Zoho's intervention in politics, because he was a soldier, he shouldn't have come into politics at all, as an utter and one almighty catastrophic disaster for our people. Catastrophic, it was. And you and I are suffering it till today. As the massacre is an example of that. Admittedly, I must give President Jonathan some credit. Admittedly, he ran what came close to a democratic government in terms of individual freedoms and liberty. But developmentally, developmentally, the, the way its development impacts on people, on the masses, his administration, like many before it, we are found wanting. Forget all that, we are the fastest growing economy and all that rubbish. I don't believe in that. If it doesn't impact on the people, no good roads, no good schools, no good hospitals, nothing, and you're saying you're growing, that doesn't make any sense to me at all. Before Jonathan, you have forgotten also, those claiming is our turn. There was a man called Obusheguno you know, Basanjo. Are Yoruba people not suffering today? If having a Yoruba man as a president meant that their lives would somehow improve, why do we have brave men like Shoure campaigning for a structural change in Nigeria, calling for a revolution now? Is he not a Yoruba man? And did he not witness a Yoruba presidency? And um, this is for those clamoring for Igbo presidency, thinking we will, we will uh, bring a much needed change in their lives. Look at the pitiful, backward northern Nigeria with their almost illiterate quota judges and professors. What has become of their lives today? The fact that they have been in power for almost 42 out of the 56 years that Nigeria have supposedly existed as a glorified British colony, let's be honest, have lives in the north improved? Let us even go to Daora. Daora, where the dead Buhari comes from, and where now the Sudanese Jubil goes to visit once in a while. Have you been to Daora? Are they sharing money in Daora? Are they happy with this buffoon that is there, the Sudanese governing in the name of their brother Buhari? 
And the answer is no. So all this nonsense about Igbo presidency, it makes me sick. Very sick. He's to, he's to correct the equity. These are the idiots running to America, running to Europe to go and buy houses. Where things are happening. So why don't you say, oh, I won't have any house in America. I'll have no house in Europe. Because um, the person, their prime minister or their president is not from my village. It's not our turn. In Daura, there are more that you have more people in Daura than in the whole of um, Anambra put together. You don't know that. In fact, of course, we have no poor people. We are hardworking people. I'm very sorry to have made a comparison anywhere because <laughs> there are no basis for comparison. We work very hard because we are blessed. We don't go about on the street begging people uh, 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 for, for, for handouts to survive. As they do, they do by the Allah. Do we do that nonsense? We don't because we are hardworking, because we are blessed. Everybody has something they are doing. Everybody, I say, they have something they are doing. So uh, having a president from, from Daura <laughs> have not suddenly transformed their fortunes and they've all become millionaires overnight. No, it doesn't work that way. So let's stop this nonsense about Igbo president and talk about our freedom, which is Biafra. Which is the only thing that should matter to us anyway. Assuming that we are serious about um, improving our plight in the zoo called Nigeria. Those in the north, are they not being ravaged? Because the type of diseases you have in the north have never seen it anywhere else before. Chronic poverty, alamajiri everywhere, banditry, lawlessness, and the corruption. Don't they have all these issues in the north more than any other part of the zoo? Where do they have IDP camps? Is it not in the north? Are they not the president? Are they not the chief of army staff? Uh, chief of uh, secretary to the state? Uh, um, um, chief of staff to the president? Uh, uh, Air force chief? Uh, every security arm? Are they not the ones in charge? But they are on the streets begging for food. Stop all this nonsense about is our town. It's the town of our people. Uh, why don't we? Do? That is for lazy people. For lazy people. People have been brainwashed into believing that having the presidency will somehow make your life better. That is nonsense. There are more full army people in IDP camps than when Jonathan, who is not a full army man, was in power. There are more people now in IDP camps than when Jonathan was there. But he's a, supposedly, he's a, of course, he's, Jubil is there on behalf of the Fulani man. Are their lives any better? The answer is no. That is why we must reason. That is the essence of this broadcast this evening, so that we can at least be able to reason. We were told this lie before that things will get better when it gets to the town of your village. But what we get is the exact opposite. We will not allow ourselves to be deceived with the promise of presidency in return for surrendering our land to Miet Yala and other Fulani terrorists, as is happening in the Bumi tonight. What we need is a revolution. And that, listen carefully, please, before I get quoted out of context. I use the word revolution. Our revolution is freedom for Biafra. Relentless pursuit of our freedom. People talk about Igbo presidency as if it will solve any of our problems. Is it not the same politicians that pocketed the money that was meant to <laughs> for the reconstruction of any big water expressway that will be in charge? Is it not the same people? Is it not the, it not the same positions you have now that a new one a road is not possible? Is, is, is it not the same crop of people? Are you going to get somebody from the moon to come and um, be the super president? It's from the same group of criminals. The same group of criminals. The same. They launder their image, they pay journalists and they write nonsense, they're the best governor, the this and that and that. You all know you're deceiving yourselves. That is why when you go back home, 
you are still faced with the same problem that you had. That mosquito will still do everything for you to come back. So it can give you malaria. The mosquito won't go away. You don't know? Because even if you even if you kill it by spraying uh, uh, insecticide, uh, there are many more, you know, breeding in the nearest uh, filthy, stagnant water. They will come in the evening. Who told you that you get rid of mosquitoes by using insecticide? Of course not. You live in a clean environment if you want it to go. That's the only remedy. Or else, new ones will come in, more aggressive ones will come in the evening. It's pure common sense. But I'm sure it's in some short supply in Africa. Well, we're here, we give it to you in abundance. It is a lie that the presidency will improve you. We will not allow ourselves to be deceived. They are taking our land. They, they go to the piano, they say to the piano, uh, you know what, we've been looking around, it's the turn of the evils. Uh, you stand a very good chance. Meanwhile, include me yet in your government, and they wouldn't include them. And they're there. And he opened his mouth and said, my yet is in my government. The same promise they make to to uh, state governor. Therefore, my, oh, it's your, your good to us. It's your turn. He said, oh, but what do you want? He said, oh, give us his Z. We'll take it, and then you'll be the president. And they go to Abia, they tell that bumbling buffoon, you'll be the president. So when we go to your village, and we're burning down people's houses and destroying their businesses and arresting everybody, don't say anything. And you'll be clapping and jumping up and down. Oh, it's my turn. Oh, yes, we have. Especially abundantly in the politicians. It's destructive selfishness. As long as they're okay with their families, the rest of it can go to hell. They don't give a damn. There's some of you stupidly, as I, I must commend our coordinator in, in Texas, that confronted those fools planning to invite Obia not to come to America. All their years in America, they've learned nothing. is to invite a criminal so they can steal money belonging to the masses to bring to America so all of you can, can drink Hennessy and share it. Incredible. Incredible. What we need is a revolution and ours is freedom. Ours is freedom because the same criminals who will go in there. These bunch of cowardly flunny slaves you have in government houses in the East encouraging the yet Yala a terrorist group will be raping our mothers. They are the ones you are going to vote for as, as your president, isn't it? The idea of Igbo presidency is a Trojan horse. And they want to use it to, to drop in our agitation. But I wish to inform them that we won't retreat nor surrender. If you wish to continue being a slave in the zoo called Nigeria, that's entirely up to you and your useless Igbo presidency. But as for this IPOB which I lead, our destination is Biafra. Yeah, anyhow, they wanted to give it to them. We are going towards Biafra. You either come with us or you relocate to the north and go stay with them there in Mugawasa. The time now is three minutes past 8 p.m. and three minutes past the top of the hour, wherever you are. This is Radio Biafra. We are live and we are direct, of course. On this very somber day, remember those massacred in Asaba exactly 52 years ago. And also dealing with this very nonsensical issue of Igbo presidency. It is a Trojan horse, and they cannot bribe us. If you want to, or if you wish to continue being a slave in Nigeria, that's entirely up to you and the Igbo presidency. Uh, we are not going anywhere. Those clamoring for presidency as a means of enriching themselves and their families should instead submit themselves to or their ideas to a referendum. So that this issue of presidency versus Biafra will be resolved once and for all time. The notion that having an evil president will resolve the mess we are in <laughs> as a people in the zoo is the most idiotic and ill-conceived notion of politics ever to come out of Nigeria. We are not, by we I mean IPOB, we are not interested in your Nigerian presidency. All we want is Biafra. Those campaigning for evil presidency are doing so for their own selfish reasons as simple as that. It has of anything. Are you more than Zig? Look at all the idiots clamoring for presidency. Ask yourself this question. Are you more intelligent than Namda Zikiwe? 
If one man does it, we could not change Nigeria or make the Alamajis in the north to be able to reason like human beings. Who are you to confuse them? Who are you? They want to enrich themselves, but uh, they will never ever succeed. It is the highest insult. I, I read one of our brothers, he, he, he's a House of Reps member. His name is uh, AK. He said, Give him his presidency in 2023 and agitation for Biafra. Can you imagine such rubbish? Somebody will just woke up in the morning and be talking nonsense. You just wake up one early morning and all that will come into your pen is hogwash, pure rubbish, and you open your mouth to pour them out to a media that will publish anything. Very sad indeed.